Thank you for joining Wars of the Rosies as we continue with part 4, The Illuminati of Adam Weishaupt, A Human Devil by Gerald B. Winrod. The Illuminati, two mighty avenues of thought, one occult and the other militaristic, converged upon the diseased brain of this wicked personage. The first was the Illuminism of centuries past, and the second was the Jesuit Order which was founded in the year 1541. It has been shown above that the roots of the system known as Illuminism reach far back into Gnosticism. The momentum of demonism continued to increase until it became a mighty tidal wave in the latter half of the 18th century. Weishaupt was caught up in the crest and proved equal to the task of capturing and imprisoning the force of the movement within the four walls of the new organization which he was then building. From the angle of the occult, it is clearly seen that the doctrines of Weishaupt were not new. His genius was rather in the fact that he was able to compress the demonic principles with which he was dealing into a system. While other systems of Illuminism had previously existed, Weishaupt's became the Illuminati. It is well attested that his order assumed fundamentally the right of life and death. To his group it meant nothing to snuff out a life, if in doing so their sinister aims were advanced. Hence the use of strange poisons and weird medicines. The use of chemicals and such things shows an unmistakable link between the Illuminati and Rosicrucianism, both of which had a common origin. While Burrell, a Catholic, was assembling his material about a plot in France, another scholar by the name of John Robertson, a Scotch protestant, was carrying on a similar investigation in the British Isles. Robertson's book was published under the imposing title, Proofs of a Conspiracy Against All the Religions and Governments of Europe, carried on by secret meetings of Freemasons, Illuminati, and reading societies, collected from good authorities by the author, Professor of Natural Philosophy and Secretary of the Royal Society of Edinburgh. The work was published in 1798. After examining the writings of Burrell, Robertson wrote, This author, Burrell, confirms all that I have said of the Enlighteners, whom he very aptly calls the Philosophist, and of the abusers of Freemasonry in France. He shows, unquestionably, that a formal and systematic conspiracy against religion was formed and zealously persecuted by Voltaire, Delenbert, and Diderot assisted by Frederick II, King of Persia, and I see that their principles and their manner of procedure have been the same with those of the German atheist and anarchist. Like them, they hired an army of writers. They industriously pushed their writings into every house and every cottage. Their writings were equally calculated for inflaming the sensual appetites of men and for perverting their judgments. They endeavored to get the command of the schools, particularly those for the lower classes, and they erected and managed a prodigious number of circulating libraries and reading societies. They took the name of economist and affected to be continually occupied with plans for improving commerce, manufacturers, agricultural, finance, etc., and published from time to time respectable performances on these subjects. But their daring project was to destroy Christianity and all religion and to bring about a total change of government. They employed writers to compose corrupting and impious books. These were revised by the society and corrected until they suited their purpose. A number were printed in a handsome manner to defray the expense, and then a greater number were printed in the cheapest form possible and given for nothing, or at very low prices to hawkers and peddlers, with the injunction to distribute them secretly through the societies and villages. 
if Professor Robertson was living today, he could not describe more accurately the tricks and schemes which are being employed before our eyes for the accomplishment of the same objective that the Illuminati had in mind. Some people think communism is only a blood and thunder proposition supported by men who are capable of throwing brick bats and bombs. This is far from the truth. The more dangerous conspirator is the one who occupies a chair in a classroom and insinuates his poison into centers of learning. The connection between the Illuminati and modern communism will be shown presently as being self-evident. While the Illuminati possessed an esoteric mystical side that appealed to Lodge members, yet this was not the phase in which Weishaupt was most deeply concerned. All of this mysterious glamour was, to him, only a means towards an end. Miserous Webster remarked significantly, On the contrary, the more we penetrate into his system, the more apparent it becomes that all the formulas he employs, which derive from any religious source, whether Persian, Egyptian, or Christian, merely serve to distinguish a purely material purpose, a plan for destroying the existing order of society. Miserous Webster is right. Weishaupt's chief aim in life was world revolution. He simply prostituted masonry because he found it to be the most practical tool available for the accomplishment of his devilish purposes. To beguile masons and capture the order, he worked out an elaborate system of secret degrees through which his followers were led step by step and finally graduated in his mysteries. Men who came under his hypnotic spell soon found their minds so confused that they were no longer capable of looking at life through normal eyes. Local lodges, thus polluted, became spawns for breeding vice and revolution. It was in these underground centers that the revolutionary activity which produced his French Revolution was hatched out. Masonic units, dotted by the thousands all over the map of Europe, was thus transformed into places of anarchy, devoted to creating mob violence. An Illumin Lodge was one that had become thoroughly trained in the principles of Weishaupt and the technique of revolution. By this means, he was able to bore beneath the surface and undermine every government in Europe. For sake of thoroughness, we will pause to outline the various degrees which constituted the path of advancement in Illuminized Masonry. These degrees were evolved by Weishaupt personally. The First Class First Degree, Minerval, Degree or Preparatory Seminary. Second Degree, the Lesser Illuminate or Illuminatus Minor. Special note, these two degrees were divided into five. One, the Preparatory. Two, the Novitiate. Three, the Minerval Degree from Minerval. Four, the Little First Degree. Five, the Great First Degree. The second class, third degree, the three degrees of masonry of St. John, apprentice, journeyman, master. Fourth degree, the greater illuminate, illuminatus major, the Scottish novitiate. Fifth degree, the directing illuminate, illuminatus derigens, the Scottish knights, the third class. A. The Small Mysteries, 6th Degree, Priest Degree, 7th Degree, Regent's Degree, B. The Greater Mysteries, 8th Degree, Magus, 9th Degree, Rex. Degrees 8 and 9 were not even supposed to exist. It cannot be emphasized too strongly that Weishaupt's true purpose was not to advance the cause of masonry. In reality, he despised the order. His consuming ambition was simply to use it as a means towards an end. Professor Robertson's careful analysis shows us that Weishaupt's program of destruction embodies the six following fundamental propositions. 1. Abolishment of all ordered government. 2. Abolishment of inheritance. 3. Abolishment of private property. 4. Abolishment of patriotism. 5. Abolishment of family. 
6. Abolishment of religion. The foregoing arrangement, when carried out, means but one thing. The breakdown of the world. These are the six basic principles of communism as we know them today. Each of these have been applied in Russia. The modern Weishaupts of Moscow expect to carry his dream through to completion and wreck the entire world before they finish. A little deeper thinking will show that communism is not a new thing. In these studies, we are taking the Red Menace back to May 1st, 1776, the day the Illuminati was officially brought into existence. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.